Welcome to welcome, welcome to Fast Track Coaching. Uh, I'm Dane Sanders, and my guest today, uh, I'll tell you about in just a second. If you're new to Fast Track Coaching, you haven't been here uh, in a while, or haven't ever been here. Normally, this conversation is really just an excuse for me to turn the camera on when I have a chance to talk with really cool people, and we end up often talking about things like creativity and business and moving things forward. And today's a little different. Um, and I'm really, really glad for it. In fact, this, this show in particular was pretty organic in how it came to be. Um, my friend uh, uh, Jeremy Coward is, is my guest today. And Jeremy's been on the show before, and we've had those kinds of conversations around creativity and business and all that sort of thing. But the reason today's a little different is because, um, for whatever reason, and I don't know if this experience happens for you guys at home or not, but some things started building for me lately around the word compassion. Uh, I started getting um, tweets and emails from friends. My friend Van Earl uh, is this uh, photographer in Portland who uh, his car broke down. He's got a kid and a wife, and it's not a car. It's not working. And then I have another friend, Tammy, in San Diego, and uh, her 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 dog passed away. She's just really discouraged. And um, there's uh, the the economy is tough sometimes for some people, depending on your circumstances and situation, and highs and lows over and over and over again. And even as a, some of you guys know, I, uh, my faith tradition is I'm a Christian. I was reading the book of Job this morning about just how rough uh, life can be in ways that just don't seem to make sense. It's kind of add up weird. And I've been reflecting on, like, are there any antidotes to that when circumstances don't go your way? Are there ways to be, to respond in, in a way that could really serve you and serve others simultaneously? And the guy I thought of right away is Jeremy Coward. So before I say too much more, Jeremy, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, man. Really glad you're here. Um, and th this is perfect, I think, given this idea of compassion, because I, I, that's that's the big idea, is thankfulness and compassion as the antidote to um, circumstances that aren't going your way. And last fall, um, I had the privilege of participating along with, I don't know, I had to be 15,000 photographers or something ridiculous like that around the world who got to participate in Help Portrait. And this was, I think, the second, at least second year, maybe third year of it happening. But a lot has happened with Help Portrait. And I'm wondering, even though I think a lot of folks know about it, Jeremy, could you give folks a little bit of background on, on how Help Portrait came to be? And um, by the way, I should just, this is an assumption that if you're watching this, you know that who Jeremy Coward is. And if you don't, uh, and you want to throw your camera against the wall, go to jeremycoward.com um, and just commit to not quitting the profession uh, once you go there. Because you'll be excited with what you see. Uh, but Jeremy does a lot more than take pictures, and this Help Portrait thing is a big deal. So Jeremy, why don't you explain a little bit of what got Help Portrait to today? Yeah, well, essentially, uh, it was an idea I had in 2008 to uh, give portraits to people in need. So I rallied some photographers together in Nashville, and we did an event for... Uh, you know, local homeless shelter, and uh, the event was just so amazing, and it was so good to to be with these kids and these families who had never had their pictures taken. Um, so afterwards, I, I made a uh, we made a video of the day and put it on Facebook, and was really overwhelmed by how many other photographers said, "Hey, if you ever do this again, I'd love to be a part." And that moment on Facebook is when I knew that this really could be a much bigger deal. And so, 2009. Uh, we put the idea out there on Scott Kelby's blog for photographers worldwide to participate, and essentially it was just an idea. Um, it wasn't even a, a nonprofit or anything official like that. But uh, uh, you guys, the photographers around the world, responded, and uh, people just took it and made it their own. And uh, to date, we've just—it's just been a huge, huge uh, movement. Um, I think we've done, you know, portraits in 60-something countries in every American state, and. You know, um, and so I don't say that to brag because it's really not about numbers. It's just about um, uh, photographers coming together, rallying together, uh, building that community, and giving portraits to people who've never had those opportunities. And uh, I'd love to get into that in a few minutes on why it matters and what's important about it. But um, anyway, that's kind of the uh, that's kind of the backstory. Well, it's it's interesting as I'm listening, and and you know, it's funny. I get why you're a humble guy, and I get why you want to minimize the numbers, but the numbers are significant. I mean, I think it it casts a vision for people to see what it's like to be a part of something bigger than themselves, and that's exciting. Um, mm -hmm. But beyond exciting, I know in my own experience with Health Portrait, I was surprised. I, I kind of came in by the phenomenon of it, 
but then when I actually got in close proximity to real people and got to hear their story and make a photograph, um, there's this one guy I'll never forget. It was his grandfather who came in, uh, and he had this suit on, and he was looking out. It was at a, a homeless shelter, and had the suit on, and he um, he looked a little out of place, like he was really put together compared to some of his friends. And um, got to get talk to him a little bit, and we said he said he was just so excited, but he was really nervous. And we thought, you know, what are you nervous about? And he says, uh, "Well, my family. I'm an alcoholic, and I'm a recovering alcoholic, and my family, for really good reasons, have written me off, and they won't talk to me." But when I heard about this, I thought this might be my one chance to get my picture taken and have to show them tangibly without me bugging them that uh, I turned my life around. I've been clean for a year, and, wow. and uh, I, I, so that's what this portrait is. And I mean, my, I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, what a privilege to enter into a conversation like that. And what I was surprised by was, okay, cool, I get to kind of play a really neat role in a moment, but. I think I was more impacted than this guy was. Like, mm -hmm. obviously, he was in the thick of it, but I was just like, just by bearing witness to what was going on and having the privilege to be behind the camera, I was amazed how much that narrative just imp still today. Like, it impacts me. I think about it regularly, and I'm guessing you've heard beyond the numbers, you've heard stories like this over and over again. Are, it, first of all, is that resonant? And number two, what are some other stories that you've heard that? that strike you as significant? Well, it's, uh, I mean, the stories go on and on. The, uh, um, you know, I've heard stories like that. I just, I can't convey to people how much. I have no idea if, if people are listening. There's probably about four of them. Um, so all four of you, uh, I can't convey how much this really is. I'm making fun of myself, not not you. I'm just, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll leave it at that. I was trying to be self-deprecating uh, there. Um, uh, but essentially, like this, this is so much bigger than photo shoots. It's so much bigger than cameras. People keep saying, you know, why give somebody pictures? People need food, shelter, clothing. Yeah. It's in fact, we we did an event in March for prostitutes and strippers, and I remember this guy uh, on Twitter saying, "Oh, you've got it all wrong. Those aren't people in need. You shouldn't be doing that. They've chosen that lifestyle." Wow. Blah blah blah, and. Uh, and by far, I mean, that was the most impactful uh, thing I have ever been a part of. I mean, I can't go into full detail to protect, to protect their identities and so forth, but I mean, we have seen, um, we've seen people quit prostitution because they were so moved by men treating them with respect and not looking at their bodies and just loving them for a day with no no other desires or intentions. Um, these women got their hair and makeup done. They got treated. Uh, they they looked normal, and that that's the first time they'd ever seen themselves that way. Um, and it turned their lives around. And so this isn't just a cute little photo shoot. This is literally life changing things that we've seen. When I was in Seattle, um, I blogged about this, but I did a I did a, a portrait for a woman who had just moved to Seattle from Palestine and she'd lost uh, her husband a few weeks before due to a heart attack and then somebody tried to uh, I've told these stories so many times that it's uh, usually I'm crying but so far I'm doing good but yeah. she uh, somebody tried to kill her son in the Israel-Palestine conflict so she came to us while her husband was alive they never had a family picture taken and so we were able to take a portrait of him and she, I shot her and her kids together, and then I combined the portrait in Photoshop, and we created their first ever family portrait. And as you can imagine, it was just an extremely um, an emotional, uh, emotional time. There was another time the first year where there was a girl who was abused as a child with acid. Her father would torture her with acid uh, and put it on her face, so she has just insane amounts of scars on her face, and she'd always dreamed of seeing a portrait with enough hair, makeup, and Photoshop to remove all her scars from her face, from her father's torture, and we were able to do that that day. And as you can imagine, um, that was a life-changing experience for her. So, so this is, uh, like I said, this isn't about simple photography, simple portraits. This is much, much deeper than. That. Then you add to that the idea of photographers crossing those competitive boundaries mm -hmm. and throwing away all our egos and our gear and forgetting about all the stuff we're normally that's normally causing tension 
and we're coming together for a day. We're giving to people in need. We're we're rallying together. It's just it's just uh, it's phenomenal. I mean, it's so it's so phenomenal to see the community come together um, from so many different standpoints. You know. Well, it, it seems like the the commodity that you're trading is dignity. Like it seems like you are giving dignity to people. Like it, in every one of those stories, it seems like you're calling out something that's true of them that isn't immediately evident and and yeah. putting it on display and that's having a transformational effect on them. Um, is that a fair way to describe it or am I missing nuance in that? Because it does, it seems unique in that it's the kind of thing that photographers can uniquely do that other other folks who have you know great philanthropic or charity mindsets, they can't give that kind of thing in the same kind of way. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that's uh, we we say that uh, my friend Annie Downs, who works with me, she says you know, food and and shelter and clothing they all feed the outside, but what we're doing with Help Portrait really feeds the inside and gives people see that it makes themselves see themselves in a new light. It, they're I mean imagine being a a 55 year old woman who has never had somebody touch her face with lipstick or no, no one has ever done her hair. No one has ever lit her properly and shown her truly how beautiful she is. Mm -hmm. And so at the age of 55, as a single mom tired, somebody shows you how amazing you are. Like it's it's so beyond anything words can describe. Um, and I've seen it so many times. I've seen women weeping after these events. I've seen them jumping for joy. I've seen them getting their first job because they're so encouraged by this new headshot. They're now providing for their families. I mean, just crazy, crazy stuff. I mean, we, you know, we're all photographers, and we just take these cameras so for granted. You know, I took probably 60 pictures yesterday of my own children. Like, it's so, it's so nothing for us to have cameras, but for most people around the world, a camera is a true, true luxury. Um, so to be able to rally together and give that luxury to people who've never had it um, is so much bigger than you know, any of us could really imagine. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. This wasn't a health portrait event, but I'm reminded of um, uh, this woman named Lama who I met in South Africa in 2004, who I had the privilege of being down there with an organization and called Bridges of Hope, and um, she was fourth stage HIV. Um, she was going to die pretty quick. She was in bed, and her little baby son was with her, and uh, and I was taking her photograph, and, and uh, I remember her crying, and I, and I was like, she, and I turned to the transfer, and I was like, she had pain, and she was like, no, 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 she's happy. And I, I was like, what in the world? And, and, and she said, you don't understand, this is the only picture ever taken of her son and her. And her son's going to have this picture now. And she can't believe that someone would take the time to do that. And that's some of it. It's just, I know. It's like, you kidding me? Like, I'm done. That's, that, that's it. If that's the contribution, that's, that's worth it. You know? Right. Um, but in that, I mean, what you've done is you've taken this kind of really great moment and you put it on display, which you do so well, man. Um, and you invited a lot more people into that conversation. Uh, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of, of uh, people to photograph. And in a, in a compassionate act, and a lot of people have responded. But what I've noticed, and this is where I really want to turn the conversation, is in the photo industry, it's amazing to see how much photographers have rallied and can rally. Uh, when when it's all dialed in and kind of handed to them, almost like the way we would uh, engage like a, a cool uh, product or a service or whatever. Um, but what I'm craving so bad is more Jeremy's in the world, more leaders who are willing to step into the responsibility of not only doing this kind of work, but creating opportunities for other people to do this, do this kind of work. Because not everyone has the resources to pull this off or can get on Scott Kelby's blog or uh, can get out there. and. And by creating Help Portrait, you built an amazing infrastructure. But now, especially given the, the new information you were sharing in your blog in the last couple of days, um, it's it's so big, it's overwhelming. So get us up to speed about where Help Portrait is right now and what the needs are if this thing is going to continue. Yeah, well, essentially, we, um, you know, this is a volunteer movement that has been run by uh, me and about four or five other people. Um, and it's been amazing. We've done it as a volunteer movement for three years. We never intended to make it a, um, a bigger thing. We thought we could continue that way, but it's gotten to a point where 
the photographers worldwide need so much of us. We need we need a better community site. We need have so many website needs. We want to be able to provide the printers and ink and paper to all the photographers. There's just so many. There's so many needs. I I can't even begin to describe it. I mean, it's it's almost the opposite of most nonprofits, where most nonprofits have a staff that's paid, but they can't get the word out and they can't. They have a hard time building the movement. Whereas we have the movement. I mean, we literally have 25,000 photographers around the world that have participated, and not one single staff person. So we're just at this place where we we have the vision of turning it into an organization like the Red Cross or you know United uh, United Way or Salvation Army, all these great things. But to do that, we need a staff, and so we're finally at a place where you know what, we, we, need, to, we need to figure that out. So we've, we began the process of fundraising. Uh, we, we announced it last week in the blog, so we are finally asking for help. And the crazy thing is we don't need that much. We just need a couple people working for us. I'm not personally going to – I'm not asking for money personally, but we need a couple people who yeah. can work around the clock to help all these thousands of photographers around the world. And so uh, we have some other exciting stuff happen, but we're starting with the simple ask of our community because you look at uh, – you know my my Twitter followers and the help portrait side. If everybody gave two dollars, we would meet our goals. You know, and so <laughs> two dollars is a pretty simple ask. It's not like we're asking for anything crazy. And so, um, and so yeah, essentially we we figured out that it actually takes about ten dollars to provide a portrait in need when it comes down to the computers, the cameras, the hard drives, the printers, all that stuff. Yeah. And so yeah, we're we're just asking people to come together. And uh, and begin the process of building building a staff for Help Portrait that can uh, that can run this thing and, and make it work. And there's there's a lot of, uh, at stake here, right? I mean, if it the, the thing with so many people participating, and given what you know, you you <laughs> you have a family, you uh, have a full time gig. You're not making a dime from this, even if we make the money. But really, it's a time issue uh, as yeah. as it relate and and being ha having the freedom to allocate more of. of of leadership around this thing moving forward, um, and I for one, I just I it has to happen, man. It has to happen, and yeah. um, we got to figure out a way to do this. And as a community, as folks are listening or watching a replay, uh, the, the the what what are the first and best things they could do? If, first of all, I guess if they want to give two or ten or any mm -hmm. amount of money, um, yeah. uh, and then second, what if they want to play at a higher level? How do they how do they get involved? Yeah, well, um, well, you know, obviously our, our, our website, help-portrait.com, um, has our community site that we're currently trying to make much better. Um, we have our Facebook page. We have our Twitter account. So there, there's all kinds of ways to get involved. I'm looking at our website right now. Um, you know, we have a get started section. Um, there's all the downloads. There's the media. There's Our blog is just insanely uh, full of, it just has so much information on how to set up these events and how to get going. Um, in fact, our latest blog post we posted today is talking about a group in, uh, in Africa that have hosted 95 events this year alone and have given 13,000 portraits over 10 weeks. Isn't that insane? Wow. Um, I mean, that we, again, we just posted that today. That's in South Africa. So 13,000 portraits uh, they've given away this year. Um, and you can see the pictures there. But yeah, I mean, our website has all the information on how to start getting involved. But, you know, people say, well, what do I do? I mean, how do I. Okay, I, I want to be involved in, say, Portland. What do I do, Jeremy? It's like, well, it's up to you. I mean, you need to uh, go to our website and start an event. You know, there might be an event already, but this is really about you taking that action, setting, finding people in need, partnering with a nonprofit, and finding a few photographers and setting up a photo shoot. I mean, it's doing what we do as professionals. You're just setting up the same thing for somebody who's never had that experience. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm so curious what you think. I, I, I'm in these conversations all the time with, with photographers around, I, I, I keep defaulting to the word leadership and responsibility, but maybe those aren't the right words. But when you run into folks that have declared, yeah, they really want to help, um, it, it seems like what's required is for people to take the mantle, to take responsibility, to go and go, just like you described, like I'm, I'm a photographer in Portland, uh, I want to go do this. Well, what it takes is you thinking. Well, when are you going to do it? Who are you going to do it with? When is it going to like? 
how you can get the word out, and just methodically doing it. But mm -hmm. it seems like there's a resistance to, with some people, not all, I don't want to, I don't want to paint in broad strokes here, but when I'm in, I guess the question is, when you're encouraging someone to take responsibility or to lead, how do, how do you do that? How do you invite them to a greater sense of, of, of responsibility? Because I know there's people listening who feel incumbent, like they, they're like, I want to participate, but they just, they just feel stuck. They feel limited. What do you say to them? Go for it. Yeah, I mean, it can be overwhelming. I mean, this is essentially uh, producing an event. But the thing is, is so many people think, well, my event's going to be small, and I don't, I don't have 100 photographers. and 100. It's not about numbers. It's not about you producing some massive thing. It can be as simple as you have a lonely neighbor next door that nobody ever pays attention to. You walk over next door. You knock on a door, and you say, hey, I, you know, explain what you do, your camera. I'd love to give you a picture. Can I give you? Can we set up a, a portrait and me take your picture? I mean, it can be as simple as shooting one portrait for your next door neighbor, or maybe bring another photographer over to help out. I mean, it can be that small. This isn't about some massive produced event, and so I don't, I don't want people to get uh, overwhelmed or intimidated by that idea. It can be as small or as big as you want it to be. Mm -hmm. And if and if folks are, if they're like, gosh, that is too much. What I love too, honestly. This is a big thank you, and it might feel like a burden to ask for money or support, but I actually think this is, believe it or not, Jeremy, another opportunity you're giving people to participate. If they're not willing to go to their neighbor or whatever, they can still say, look, I want to empower other people to be able to do this and, uh, en masse, and by opening up the op opportunity for people to make a donation or participate that way, it's real, it's concrete, and they should feel good about that kind of engagement. I have a hunch, too, right. if they do do that, they'll be a quarter step closer to picking up that camera and participating. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, absolutely. The, the, I know we have time. Time is short, and, and I want to be sensitive. And you got a lot going on. Um, and I know that folks track you and all that you're doing. Um, there's there's a big thing that we're not going to talk about that has that for a tease of what you're in the middle of that is really exciting that I'm thrilled about. Uh, there's also a, a littler thing, but is is way cool, uh, which uh, is your that iPhone app thing, and I know I'm switching gears pretty quick, but I want to make sure we have a chance to, to, to talk a little bit about it. What is this crazy thing that you're building? <laughs> well, I shouldn't have even teased you. Let's just say that we're, we're building something really exciting. We're building an iPhone app that's coming out in October, and uh, we've been working on this for nearly two years, and it's not a Jeremy Cowart iPhone app. It not, <laughs> not, has nothing to do with me. It's not, it's not my daily Jeremy, where I get another, like a picture. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. You now get a daily portrait of me on your phone. Oh, my gosh. That would be the worst. That would be the worst selling app of all time. Um, no, I, I can't release details yet, but we're, we're really excited. Uh, it's, it's an app for photographers that's very different. It hasn't been done before, truly. Um, and I think it'll really surprise a lot of people. So we're, exci we're excited about that. Another thing I didn't tell you about mm -hmm. that I can talk about, we're launching it. We're launching um, a Kickstarter uh, project this week. Nice. I am headed. To, I am headed to Af Africa next uh, month, and I am going to be collaborating with child, former child soldiers in Uganda, and we're going to be creating this uh, crazy um, art uh, piece. They're doing art therapy as a part of their healing, and uh, I mean they were. Uh, forced to do pretty traumatic things um, from the LRA, the Lord's Resistance Army, mm -hmm. and uh, so I'm going to be collaborating with these children and creating uh, hopefully an iPad book, uh, a traveling art exhibit. We're going to be creating a multimedia um, experience from these kids' art, and uh, so I can talk about that. I'm very excited about that. That'll that'll happen the last two weeks of September. That I'll be over working on that. So that's exciting. Now, is that is that connected? To, I mean, obviously the the things you're describing sound a lot like uh, Invisible Children, is that the organization you're connected to or is it something else? Um, I'm friends with everybody in Invisible Children, but this project is not connected to them. It's uh, connected to an organization called Exile International, uh -huh. and their focus uh, their focus is art therapy, and so um, they we go over with armed with art supplies, paints and charcoals and oil pastels, and we just sit down with the kids and... Uh, and uh, you know, paint the paint the past and paint the the dreams and hopes of the future. So it's going to be a really powerful, powerful project that I'm very excited about. And that's going to be a Kickstarter campaign, so people can participate. When uh, when is that going live? That should go live hopefully tomorrow, actually. 
Yeah. Man, I'm so stoked on the Kickstarter. Uh, I've, I've backed a couple projects recently, and, and uh, I can't... It's just so fun to participate like that on a global level. And to, to yeah. the idea of... of um, yeah, just... If, you, if, you, if I don't get to go to Africa, I get to support it. I, I can't wait. Please send me the link personally. I want to participate. I want to back it. So, and yeah. a lot of other folks will too. Um, Absolutely. Uh, dude, do you sleep? Do you like? It's <laughs> it's funny to me how much, I you're you're so active as a professional shooter. Um, you're doing so much work. I don't know how in the world do you find the margin to go and. And to create a help portrait, or to create, or to, to be part of a Kickstarter, or to make an iPhone app, like seriously, how how are you able to to spread that, uh, spread your resources as far as you have? Um, yeah, it's a loaded question. I mean, it it's it's a little bit too much right now. It's a lot too much. I'm I'm working around the clock because uh, there's some other very big things that we haven't even discussed um, that that you're aware of, but. Uh, I don't know, man. Uh, I, I'm I'm as ADD as it gets, truly, and uh, I'm like, ooh, another shiny new thing to pursue, and and that can be a really, a really terrible thing, um, and it can be a really beautiful thing, and and right now, thankfully, it's mostly a beautiful thing, and I've got help. Uh, I've got a business manager that really helps connects all the dots between this stuff. Uh, I've got a wife that uh, supports me uh, beautifully, and. Um, you know, uh, but it, it's all coming to a head right now, and so I'm a little bit overwhelmed, and I, I, I need a clone machine very quickly. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't, I don't know. I just I feel like God gives me ideas, and I feel responsible to pursue them and make them happen, and, um, mm -hmm. and that's what I love doing. I don't really think of myself as a photographer whatsoever. I mean, photography is a, certainly a tool that I enjoy, but I don't think my future is really going to look like any – you know, traditional photographer. I'm I'm diving into other areas that, um, from humanitarian projects to technology to uh, other businesses, and uh, I just enjoy being a creative person who executes ideas. So, well, I, I sure appreciate it about you, man. In fact, I I think it's great news if that's the case because I think um, the when you when you describe that work in in uh, with Exile International. And I, I, when I when I've been around you in more personal moments, I've just been struck by that. It just seems like you are skilled in all these other areas, but that is your wheelhouse. Like that's when it seems mm -hmm. like you're most at home. And um, it's ironic because it's so out of the limelight when you're doing that kind of work. Yeah. Yet, yet it's uh, it just seems like your heart's singing in it, and I think a lot of folks get get blessed by it and inspired by it. And I'm yeah. so grateful that you put that stuff out there for for jokers like me to see it and get. Inspired myself and create my own little little stuff. Um, it's significant. So thanks for all you're doing, man. Yeah, yeah. It's one of those things where I, uh, you know, the the celebrity stuff doesn't fulfill me whatsoever. I mean, it's you know, it's good for to build a platform or whatever. But one day I'm not going to tell my kids about the celebrities I work with. One day I want to tell them about the people that we worked with and helped portrait and the kids that worked with in Africa. I mean, those are the that's a legacy I want to leave my children. And so all the other stuff is is kind of silly when you really think about it. And so, uh, you know, just a matter of building that story. I tell people that we're the first generation that will be remembered. You know, you think about it, you can't Google. If I Google my grandfather, nothing will come up. If I Google my dad, just a few things will come up. But we'll be the first super, super documented generation ever in the history of the world. And so I think about all these things, this track record that I'm leaving online between photos and tweets and Facebook posts and blogs and all the stuff. And I realize that my kids and their kids and their kids and their kids are going to be reading about me one day. And I'm the first ever for that to happen. And so I'm always thinking about that. What, what legacy are we leaving? What are we, what are we teaching future generations through this new digital platform? And so, um, you know, something I'm really passionate about. Well, you're right on every count, man, and uh, I just count it a privilege to be friends with you, and and uh, thankful for all that you're doing. Um, if, if you're at home, uh, please do uh, jump on to Help Work Your Site. Jump, jump in, participate. Don't be a spectator or a consumer. Uh, take responsibility. Take the opportunity uh, to participate. You'll be the one that is the benefactor if you do. Mm -hmm. um, all the other pieces. Uh, I, I just hope folks choose to intentionally follow up. And and someday, by the way, I'm going to get you back again here, Jeremy. And and I think it'd be fun to talk about. Uh, definitely not today because we're both overwhelmed. But um, 
building building a support system that enables you to fulfill what you're called to do. Uh, and uh, as someone who's just you know a friend in the hallway uh, with you, um, if there's ever anything I could ever do, and I know I'm speaking for a lot of people, we want to actively engage, and it begins concretely with things like helping out with Health Portrait and mm -hmm. other pieces. And, and uh, you can count on me, man. I'm, I'm excited to be in the crowd. Thanks, man. I really appreciate your support. Seriously. Right. Thanks for doing this today. All right. Thanks, everybody. Uh, this will be up on the blog here shortly, and if you watch it live, good for you. And uh, uh, feel <laughs> free to follow at Jeremy Cowart and uh, reach out that way, too, if you want. Thanks, Jeremy. All right. Thank you, man. See you yeah. all.